Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be here today uh, on behalf of Sonai Sierra and the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. And I think it's a very uh, interesting and important conference in sustainability that we'll have in the region. We have uh, several mega sources of energy that we are using currently all over the world. And if we look at the greenhouse gas emissions that are uh, emitted from the direct combustion of primary energy, we look at the buildings in the, the building sector is responsible for about 12% of these greenhouse gas emissions. If we look at the building sector from another point of view, and um, how much do the buildings emit, uh, use in terms of final energy consumption, the, the panorama changes significantly. So the World Business Council sat down and the, one of the first things uh, that came across when talking about this uh, project on energy efficiency is that the buildings have an extremely com complex value chain, which means that when you are thinking of building a building throughout its whole lifetime of the building, there's so many actors that you need to intervene with in order to get to somewhere. It's like you have what? You have users, you have owners, you have developers, you have regulators, you have materials and equipment suppliers, you have uh, project um, authorities that need to authorize your project. And I'm forgetting a lot of uh, actors somewhere along the line, but it's just to know there are a lot of different boxes. And we, we know that they are not talking very well between themselves. Uh, and so we know that in order to get uh, um, our goals and our objectives uh, through, we need to be able to talk with all these little different boxes throughout the, the value chain of the buildings. So we know that coordination is the key. Another interesting thing is, when you look at the energy balance of the building's life cycle, what can we see in this slide? 83% of the energy of a building corresponds to this usage phase. So this is enormous. Okay, so if we want to know where we, where we need to act first, it's in the usage phase. So by, by building buildings that are uh, fitted with um, efficient equipment, we know that we will, we will have much higher chances of uh, achieving a better efficiency in the buildings. Another interesting thing is uh, when should we act if we are going to try to enhance the energy efficiency in buildings? This chart basically shows the green line is um, the, shows the potential of the measures that we can implement in order to enhance the energy efficiency in the buildings uh, along the lifetime of a building. And the blue line shows us the cost and the disruption that these measures that we are going to implement have. This is the impact of the measures in terms of cost and disruption throughout the lifetime of the building. And basically what this chart tells us is that the sooner you act, the more, uh, the higher performance you can get out of the measures that you are implementing at the lower cost and lower disruption. So the project started with its first phase um, by, by modeling. Uh, we took some data, some existing data from the International Energy Agency and uh, this is a baseline which basically assumes that 2006 is the baseline and from until 2050 we will have um, about half of the, the property stock with energy efficient buildings. We, we went and we modeled what are the impacts of uh, the buildings, the overall buildings in the CO2 emissions all over the world. Looking at the red line, this is, the red line shows us um, the scenario in case all the buildings that we build from now till 2050 are traditional buildings, if they are not energy efficient. And well, it doesn't look that good. And um, the different, all the other lines is we played to, uh, along with the different efficiency that the energy efficient buildings, the ones that were shown in the green area in the previous slide, we need to have, uh, and what is the impact on the CO2 emissions that, that the building sector is, is uh, emitting. And one th interesting thing we can see in this slide is the gray line. The gray line shows us uh, this, the efficiency that is required so that by 2050 we have the same amount of CO2 emissions as we had in 2005. 
this is 94%, this is the required level of efficiency that we need to have in each and every new building that is energy efficient in order to maintain our CO2 emissions of 2005. Now, all the energy efficient buildings, each and every new energy efficient building that we will need to build from now on until 2050 just needs to, 50, to be 54 percent. But this is, this is still an impressive efficiency level. We want these buildings to be economically viable to build and operate. Having this vision as a, as a, as a goal, we, we set out the work plan. As I was telling you before, the first report is out. This was uh, published in the August 2007. If you are curious, you can go to our website and it's free to download. By the end of 2008, we will have the report of the second phase and by 2009, we'll have the final and, uh, and complete report for the project. Uh, together, again, I was telling you, um, we are, it's not only the, f the work team from these 14 companies, we also have all the companies from the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, we have experts from third parties, and we have a steering committee. Before finishing, I would like just to, to share with you a couple of information from the first phase. Uh, actually, urgent action is really needed, because uh, we did also a projection, 2003 level of uh, annual energy demand divided by country is shown in the blue arrows. And then we made a projection taking into consideration two uh, electricity levels per capita, the Jap Japanese and the North American one. And we have the green and the, and the, um, and the gray areas. And my God, this looks, uh, this looks quite scary because if you see India in the worst case scenario, they will need 35,000 terawatt hour. And India is the third largest coal producer in the whole world. In order to reach this energy demand, they will need to build 4,000 uh, power plants. And uh, China, well, I don't know if we are really aware. China is building so many buildings today that every three years are built as many buildings in China as the whole Japan. And every 10 years, China builds as many buildings as all the buildings we have all over Europe. So China is getting really big. So we really need to find out some solutions today. I mean, we are only going to finish the project in 2009. It should have been yesterday. But it's better later than, now, than never. We, we really need to act now. So we thought, OK, we want to perceive building professionals as being members of the family Simpson. And uh, we have here, we have Marge, we have Maggie, we have Homer, and we have Lisa. And uh, well, we know some of the building professionals are uninformed, some of them are skeptical. Uh, I'm not sure this is the right thing, so let's see how the market evolves. And then some are basically unengaged. And uh, the World Business Council went and thought, how can we put everybody to Lisa's part of the charge? We want everybody to be a campaigner and to use this as the, as the business as usual way of implementing building sector. There are basically two, two parts. We need to inform people more, we need to educate them, and some of the building professions actually need to be actively convinced why this is good. So this is two important vectors that, that we need to, to also consider throughout our project. And this is just to open your appetite. These are some of the results of the model that we are getting. But um, if you keep an eye on our website, uh, around October or November, we should be publishing the report of the second phase. So I leave you with the vision of our buildings, of our project for buildings in 2050. And this is our work plan. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. And I hope today and tomorrow's discussions on our conference can lead to fruitful uh, conclusions and recommendations.